This lesson is going to discuss how to analyze whether or not to add or drop a product line. Here's the situation we're going to use to study. This is Color Company and they're concerned about their losses. They're looking at the blue and the red lines and they're seeing that they uh, are losing money. They're unprofitable and green is profitable. And the total company, all three of these added up is unprofitable. So they have a problem. And they're thinking that if they get rid of blue and they get rid of red, that their profits will increase by those amounts and that they'll be doing better. So should they get rid of blue and red? Would their total profits increase by the 19,000 and the 11,006 if they ditched them? It's a common misconception to think that if you get rid of a product line that you're going to get rid of all the costs of that product line because some of those costs are allocated. So some fixed costs are different from other fixed costs. So if you go back to the prior screen for a minute, you'll see we have sales, variable costs, contribution margin, fixed costs, and operating profit. Those variable costs are specific to the sales, right? Those are the materials, labor, over variable overhead related to getting those sales done. But those fixed costs, since they don't change with activity, may not be related to the activity in each product line. So how did they get there? Well, they could have been allocated or they may be related to the product line. We can't tell from looking at this. So to study whether we should keep or get rid of a product line, we have to separate the fixed costs into these two kinds. The allocated kinds, the ones that are common or corporate, um, that won't go away if a part of the business is eliminated. And why won't it go away? Because others are using that equipment. So there may be parts of the factory or there may be equipment that's used by all the product lines. And so it's spread to all the product lines because they all use it. But it won't go away if one of the product lines leaves because the other two still need it. But there are uh, avoidable fixed costs and those are the ones that are specific to that piece of the business. So they're dedicated just to that one product or segment. They're not shared with other products or segments. And so if you get rid of that product, that fixed cost goes away. So in order to analyze this add or drop a product line, we have to separate the fixed cost into those that are allocated and shared and those that are unique to just that segment of the business. Now we didn't have enough information in the details of the problem, so I'm going to have to split those uh, fixed cost for you. So here they are, here's Color Corporation again, and here's their three product lines, and we have blue and red showing their unprofitable operating profit, or operating losses, actually. And now we have, instead of one line for fixed costs, we have two lines. We have avoidable fixed costs. So that 10,000 is related to something that only green is using. So if you get rid of green, the 10 is going away. This 20,000 is related only to blue. So if you get rid of blue, this will go away. The 30,000 is related only to red, and so it's not sharing whatever this thing is with the other product lines. But this 150,000 here, it is shared. So that's maybe the factory, that could be maybe the um, manufacturing locations manager, that could be the president, that could be the corporate, that could be the folks that are in charge of legal and tax return and all kinds of things that are not product specific. Now, they do allocate these costs to the products so that they will be sure to price to cover them, but they're not unique to these product lines. So if you get rid of blue, that 50000 will just have to be spread between green and red. So it's common costs, shared costs. So now we're ready to analyze what would happen if we got rid of either blue or red. So the first thing we're going to do is create a segment margin. So we're going to take the avoidable fixed and group it with each product and come up with something called the segment margin. This is not the contribution margin, this is the segment margin, but it shows the profit that each product ma margin creates on its own before having to bear any shared cost. And so we look at blue and blue is throwing off 31,000, but it's not enough to cover the shared cost that's assigned to them. But if we get rid of blue, we will get rid of the 170 in sales, the 119,000 in avoidable costs, and the 20,000 in avoidable fix. But we can't get rid of the 50. 
the 50 is going to stay because it's shared. Green and red are using whatever those costs are. So if you get rid of blue, that 50,000 doesn't go away. That's an illusion. It makes it seem like it would go away because we have assigned it to blue, but it won't. It's a common cost, and it would stay and just be split among the remaining products. So if you get rid of blue, you're going to lose this 31. So let's get rid of blue here and see what happens. So blue is gone. What has happened now over here? Profit got worse. Why did it get worse? It got worse by the 31 because this 150 stayed and was split between green and red. So in fact, if there's a pro positive segment margin, that segment is contributing towards the fixed common cost, even if it's not contributing enough to cover what you've assigned to it. So if you get rid of it, you get rid of the segment margin. So let's try another problem to see if we've understand if we understand this logic. Here's the color, color company, but these are three different divisions and they're fretting about pink and yellow. And they're thinking about ditching them. Okay, so here we have total fixed costs, but we don't have the fixed cost break, broken out between avoidable and common. Okay, let's break that out for you now. All right, so now we have avoidable fixed and common fixed by product line. Now see if you can freeze the frame and work the rest on your own, and then we'll do it together. So what we need is this segment margin subtotal here. So I've done that for you. Hopefully you did that for yourself on your page. And so now we have this segment margin. Now look at pink. Pink has a negative segment margin. So if we get rid of pink, we'll get rid of the 200,000 and the 170,000 and the 40,000, meaning we will get rid of 10,000 loss. Not the 40,000 loss because this 30,000 is sticking, but we will get rid of the 10,000 loss. So let's see, let's watch. So another way to do it or another way to think about it is imagining that those common costs are not spread. See the 90,000? So just when you spread it, you get this impression of something that's not true. You get the impression that it belongs to those units and therefore will go away. So some companies decline to actually allocate those common corporate or um, shared costs because they don't want to create that illusion. So here, let's get rid of pink. So everything in the pink column is gone and that 30,000 is split between brown and yellow. We still have 90,000 in common costs, but we just don't have pink to assign any to. So it got better by the 10,000, didn't it? Say we went from an $8,000 loss to a $2,000 profit. That's a 10,000 improvement. And that's because we got rid of that negative segment margin. So when the segment margin is negative, getting rid of that product line or section of the business will improve total profits. But if the segment margin is positive, as it is here with yellow, we will get worse by 27 if we get rid of yellow. Do you want to get rid of yellow and see? Let's try. So let's eliminate yellow. So pink is gone and that improved us. We got to the $2,000, which was 10,000 better than the 8,000 loss. But now let's get rid of yellow. Okay, yellow is gone here. And what happened? We got worse by 27,000. Why? Because we gave this up. And that whole 90 had to be allocated to brown. Looks like I forgot to stick it in the brown column there, but I should have done that. Sometimes you have to listen to this more than once and it might be better to work on your homework or read the chapter and then come back and watch this again to see if it soaks in a little better the second time.